Hello everyone, welcome to uh, Monbukla Gaussian Chemistry 2016. Now it is still part 5, but number 2 to number 6. Number 2, what is the isomers exist for monosubstituted naphthalines? What it means is you have naphthalene and you have just one something substituted to the naphthalene. Let's say it's X. Okay, so isomer means that uh, you can have this form but in a different way for example this is naphthalene uh, so untidy this is naphthalene and this way you see this is the same uh, exact formula for the compound but different position that is called isomers and they say how many of this pattern can be okay you see that if you have uh, this one, naphthalene, and you have the X is here. This is the same, right? You just turn it there and it will become this. That is not isomers. That is just, you know, a switching position. Okay? If you have X here, it's the same. You just turn the naphthalene and it is just the same uh, position. That is not also isomers. Therefore, for this part, if you put any of this position and this one this one this one and this one it is the same exact position now for this one whether you put anywhere at this side this one this one this one this one it will only have one position therefore for mono substituted naphthalines have only uh, mono substituted naphthalines two isomers okay now for number three how many isomers exist for naphthalene derivatives with the same two substituents? Now it is get elevated for the question. Now you have two. Okay. So pretty much you actually have just worked only for one, right? Because if you put X in here, it's just the same, right? You put X in here, it's the same. You're just switching, I mean, switching the compound you can just uh, work here let's say this is naphthalene only one this is your number one isomers you see that if you put x here then one more is here that is different so that is the second isomers okay then for this one let's say you have x there let's turn it here you have x here and the another x is here that is the, the third isomers then when you have this isomer let's say you have x here then x here that is the fourth isomer okay and when you have this one x and x you have the fifth isomers Okay, then you have this one, X and X. You have total six isomers just by this one, you know, switching the position from this to this, then it here, then here, then here, here, here. Okay, you got six isomers on one side. And remember, when you switch it from there to there, it's just the same, okay? So no matter you have this one, naphthalene here, let's say this one, and you put it here, it's actually the same. So you have six isomers the first, and now the second pattern, now you use the two to combine. You have x here, and guess what? You can have x here, okay? So practically, you have four left. Do you know why? Because you can put x here, then here, then x here, and then hey, it's actually just switching, isn't it? I think that's not the case. If you put it down here, you only have the switching position. I think the last two should be here, right? <clears throat> then, uh, and then one more 
is here. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You have 10 isomers for derivatives of naphthalene with the same two substituents. Okay? So let's go to number 4. Number 4 it says, how many isomers for phthalic acid? I actually have to do this with the internet. I have to find what is phthalic acid. Phthalic acid, literally, this one. The, the compound that we found for the C answer in the 5 part 1, right? Well, the isomer of that is only 3, right? There are some, this one. Uh, and then one more is this one. There are 3 isomers of phthalic acid. You can have in the ortho position meta position and para position now what if the the second question says that what which has the highest melting point among the isomers now the trick is just look at the size of it okay so let's review that one has something in here another isomers have something in here have that certain position that's it Okay, so let's assume that X is COH. They have the same formula, same compound, same total, same value. The problem is the position. The widest area covered is the highest melting point or the highest boiling point. So the widest is this one. So the answer is COOH. COOH, phthalic acid with the para position. And the answer is selected from the 1 to 15 option. Well, the answer is 15. All right. And you might say that how many isomers there? You just answer three. Number five, they say, which of the description is not correct? Just two. Okay, number one, naphthalene is obtained by the fractional distillation of coal tar. It's true. Naphthalene, benzene, phenol, all types of benzene found in the fractional distillation of coal tar they are they are there they cannot be anywhere naphthalene is not soluble in ethanol well for the answer what do you think for naphthalene in ethanol well naphthalene in ethanol is actually soluble so number two is wrong naphthalene is an aromatic of course, naphthalene, benzene, all kinds of benzene and its derivatives, and naphthalene derivatives, anthracene, phenanthrene, pyrene, it's all aromatic. Naphthalene is solid and easily sublimates, of course. Naphthalene has deliquescence. Okay, so let's skip that. Number six, easily undergoes electrophilic aromatic substitution. Of course, you can see that in the previous example, naphthalene has so many derivatives. Now, what is deliquescence? Deliquescence is the uh, property where a compound absorb, easily absorb water moisture from the air and when it absorbs too many water from air, the absorbed water itself dissolves the compound. So we have said that the, ten the compound have tendencies to absorb water from air. And the most extreme condition is Hygroscopic condition. Hygroscopic is more extreme than the liquescence. But the problem is, naphthalene easily sublimates. Therefore, it will not have any deliquescence at all. So the answer is 2 and 5. Just remember this property, which is correct, which maybe have in the next test, maybe. Okay, number 6. Anthracene is a solid polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon. Anthracene is this one. Have three rings of benzene. Very extreme, isn't it? Now, what is the isomer for the mono substituted anthracene? There is actually only three. If you have X here, let's say you switch X to here, it's just switching the position. The next one is this 
you put it anywhere in here 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 it's the same and the third is here let's put it here 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 the same so there are three isomers for mono substituted anthracin well thank you guys for watching i hope you understand that organic chemistry is very broad Thank you for watching.